Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Phillips, president of Americans for Prosperity, coming to you from Missouri, out on the road with our grassroots effort to stop this, frankly, horrific legislation coming out of Biden, Schumer, and Pelosi in Washington, D.C. Uh, that will be just disastrous for our freedoms, uh, for our nation's prosperity, and so much more. This is another of a continuing series of Facebook conversations with key leaders who at a key moment are stepping up and working to protect our country from this legislation and so much more, frankly. And uh, we have a very special guest today, Don Hager, our State Director for Americans for Prosperity from South Dakota, is with us to introduce her. Don, take it away. Thank you, Tim. Uh, hey, it's uh, it's good to be with uh, everyone today, and, and I'm excited to uh, to be on this interview with uh, with uh, Governor Kristi Noem from here in South Dakota. Um, she was uh, she was our congresswoman uh, for a while, and and then uh, uh, more recently uh, uh, our our governor. And uh, um, proud to have you with it with us, Christy. Uh, so here's the thing: we're you know Tim mentioned infrastructure, and we've been talking about that quite a bit. And I just don't think that word means what they think it means in Washington. Uh, and and so let's talk about what that is you know we we often hear about the uh about here's what we'll get for this and what we'll get for that but what people really want to know is who's paying for all this mm -hmm. and and what how are we paying for all this so can you talk to us about that well the bill that's coming out of the biden administration is not an infrastructure bill it has some components uh, that gives them a little bit of opportunity to uh, save some face, but a lot of what is in that bill is overspending, that is deficit spending, that gives the government more control over people's lives. And it's a fundamental change of our way of life. So when we traditionally think about infrastructure, it's, it's a lot of what we funded last year in the South Dakota legislature. We had historic revenues because of our growing economy here in our state. And we funded railroads. So we funded the repair of dams and our roads and bridges, things that we rely on to make sure that people can do commerce and that they can be successful with their private businesses and their families. Uh, we funded broadband expansion and investment across the state of South Dakota. And that is a lot of the talking points uh, that the Biden administration uses that simply aren't in this bill. And a lot of it is policies that expand the government's authority over people's lives, puts more taxes in place, but also ensures that our kids and grandkids will be picking up the debt far into the future. And so what I think people really need to remember is it's been a while since we've reminded them who's buying our debt in this country. Uh, when I first got to Congress about 10 years ago, uh, we knew that China was openly buying our treasury bonds to allow the United States government to keep its doors open. That's still continuing today. So while we see a threat from many other places in the world, uh, China is still a very real threat from the military side, uh, from the economy side, but also from what we've seen with this virus and also they're purchasing our debt and our food supply system. So you know, this has got long lasting consequences that you and I, Don, are not going to have to really bear the brunt of. It's going to be future generations that will deal with the mistakes that we're making in this country. Yeah. You know, and Governor, the, the, as bad as the spending is, and it's really terrible, you mentioned the debt and the deficits, a lot of the social policy, uh, and you touched on it a bit, you know, coming mm -hmm. out of Washington, D.C. in this bill, I, it's, it's, it's in some ways even worse. Uh, I think about some of the elements of the, you know, the Green New Deal uh -huh. that will infringe on individual freedoms. Uh, it'll make energy more expensive in this country. Can, can you talk a little bit about what the, the impact can be if, if this legislation passes with all of these extraneous provisions that, you know, that further build up the power of the federal government? Well, the amount of regulations that are included in this bill, including the taxes on the energy uh, sources that we utilize today to keep our commerce going is incredible. And I think the mandates that it puts on the United States and the people that live here, while not applying those types of mandates to other countries and giving an uneven playing field to them over uh, us here in this country, I think is incredible. Uh, the Green New Deal, we know, would devastate our way of life. And we live 
in South Dakota, the middle of the country, we're heavily reliant on energy. It's it's cold in the wintertime here, it's hot in the summer, and it's a long ways to drive anywhere. And this bill punishes uh, states like South Dakota much more than other parts of the country that subsidizes um, unstable energy sources that that really can't be predictable into the future. So I've always been a diversified energy supporter. I just want it to be an American energy supply. Uh, and I want it to be one that makes sense economically and one that's predictable and that we can rely on far into the future. And this bill um, goes out there and it incredibly picks winners and losers, which is not what the federal government should be doing. Boy, that's that's right, Governor. And and you know another aspect of this bill uh, is is in healthcare. Uh, and you know you hear them talk about uh, Medicare for all and and a, and a public option. When I think what people really want uh, is a personal option, mm -hmm. uh, affordable health care and, and accessible health care and, and transparency in prices and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So talk to us about that. Well, and we're having that discussion here in South Dakota. You know, I think there's been a consistent press uh, across the country and from the federal government to take more decisions out of people's hands when it comes to their family's health care and give it to the government. And if, if ever that became more real uh, to families across our state and across the country, it's during this pandemic. People mm -hmm. are realizing that they don't want the government telling them uh, what they have to put in their bodies, what they don't have to put in their bodies, what is going to be mandated, uh, not based on the science and the facts. I think we've learned that in a very new way the last 18 to 24 months. And uh, here in South Dakota, there's a consistent press to do Medicaid expansion and to get more people on government programs, uh, telling them that it will be much better for their family and free health care when in reality, it's more mandates, lack of control and personal responsibility and more expenses for the taxpayers that isn't sustainable far into the future. So this is an agenda to get people reliant on the government. And I'm trying very hard in every discussion that I have with people to remind them that they have to be careful what they ask the government to step in and do in their lives. A government that's so powerful that it can give them everything that they want is also a government that can take all their freedoms away. And, and what many times we see people asking the government to do is not the role of the government. It is the role of other entities, private businesses, people individually, uh, in communities, churches, and nonprofits, not what the government should be doing. Our founders envisioned a very limited small government where the power was left to the people. And I think that's an education process we have to continue into the future. And today it's becoming much more real. Uh, the, the, the reality of the fact that we still need to do that education uh, to the population that lives here now. You know, what I often think about when the government promises health care, they often say health insurance. Yeah. Uh, but health insurance and health care are very different things. And I think about Americans in states where Medicaid is expanded, uh, their wait times to see doctors are so, so much longer than, mm -hmm. than folks, Americans who have private insurance. And, uh, and my mom, who's on Medicare, she's 85. I, I just, I, you're right. When the government runs to lock in as many folks onto government care, uh, they mean insurance. But the care is often substandard and it's delayed, delayed, delayed. And when you get a cancer diagnosis or a, a heart diagnosis, you want care right away. And I, I look, you know, we can look north at Canada and some of the problems they have with national insurance uh, in healthcare. We can look over the Atlantic at uh, England and it's the same thing. So such an important issue. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Um, make your voice heard if you haven't done so to your members of Congress. You can click the I Volunteer link. It's right there in the Facebook thread. It takes about a minute to a minute and a half. But what it does is allow you to tell your two United States senators and your House member uh, to vote no on this legislation that will encroach on your freedoms and, and harm the very prosperity of this country. Over 2.1 million Americans have done what we're asking you to do right now. So click that link, make sure that you can know that you've done everything you can at a crucial moment for the country. It will just take a moment. Um, Governor, we've touched on some of the Green New Deal provisions, the, the health care.
provisions, both of which are, are really terrible in this legislation. Um, I know you have in South Dakota, Don's talked about it, a, 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 you know, an agenda uh, that, that does allow healthcare to be reimagined, um, you know, that gives people more choices. Do you want to talk about that perhaps a, a better way than the way the United States government, uh, at least uh, Biden, Schumer and Pelosi are giving us right now on health care? Well, there's, there will be a debate coming up, I think, on, on Medicaid expansion in the state of South Dakota. We have not done that in the past, and I'm not supportive of that. For us, it is much more about giving people more options, about giving them the opportunity to have choices and to make sure that we're uh, giving them opportunities to, to make those decisions for their families, bringing competition into that market and giving providers uh, the opportunity to be outside of systems as well is incredibly important. So that's the diversified healthcare portfolio that we're offering. We also had some bills passed through the legislature that gave other entities the ability to pool together to offer policies um, to their members as well. And I think that was creative and something that we embraced and to bring more transparency forward uh, and to give people the opportunity to have that type of interaction on costs that they haven't had before with insurance companies and providers. So, you know, that puts more power into the hands of the people making the decisions over their family's health care, and it gives them the opportunity to make it more affordable and to make wiser decisions on where they choose to get their health care uh, in our state. Well, and, and Governor, I, you know, you actually passed a number of well, I think, uh, you know, very innovative uh, reforms in, in healthcare. Um, this past session, you relaxed uh, regulation around telehealth. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we passed something um, uh, called direct primary care, which is really mm -hmm. kind of a, a Netflix version of healthcare, uh, which I think uh, is very innovative. And, uh, and you even passed some, uh, some expansion of scope of practice. So mm -hmm. don't sell yourself short. You did a lot of <laughs> things this past session. Well, we've long been leaders in telehealth here in South Dakota. And, and doing that in innovative ways, I think, is incredibly important. That's one of the reasons we focused on getting high-speed internet access to so many corners of the state and, and so many homes was because we have these models that uh, can deliver not just healthcare and consultations, but mental health uh, counseling sessions and veteran support services right in their home that will save people time, money, and get them better quality of care no matter where they live. So, you know, for us, we've been doing that for quite some time in the state of South Dakota, getting the, the infrastructure to do that is important, but also making sure that we cut the regulations to allow it to happen as well, make sure that it really is a tool that people can utilize. Coming back to this bill um, that President Biden is pushing, we've talked about the, the health care side and the uh, Green New Deal element. Uh, let's take a moment, if we could, and talk about the tax increases here. Uh, we're, they're talking about a corporate tax increase that will hit American businesses, and the vast majority of those businesses that will get hit are smaller operations, 20, mm -hmm. 25 employees. They're the ones who really bear the brunt of these corporate taxes when they go up. They're talking about individual rates, uh, a, a death tax reinstitution, a carbon tax on our very fuel that will drive up utility bills that'll hurt, I think, about folks on fixed incomes and those young couples and single moms and, and seniors on fixed incomes. You know, if a utility bill goes up eight, 10, 12 dollars, that's a lot in, a, in the course of a month. God forbid if it's 30 or 40 dollars more. Do you want to talk a little bit about the, the tax approach and the concern uh, you would have for folks in South Dakota and across this country with these tax provisions? Well, it's completely disingenuous the way that this administration and Democrats talk about those tax increases. They keep saying it's only going to be on the rich and it's not going to affect the everyday people that get up and go to work to provide for their families. And it's just simply not true. We all know that when they raise taxes, even on business owners and on those in corporations, that it gets passed down to the consumers. And that's people right now who are having a difficult time paying their bills. They're seeing incredible inflation go in place. Uh, they're seeing higher costs in gasoline and energy costs today. Uh, and then they go out and increase um, taxes and it gets passed down in cost of goods 
uh, and daily budgets, it's going to be devastating for those that, that, that work so hard to put food on the table. When I served in Congress, I worked extensively for over two years on the tax reform package that we signed into law with President Trump's help. And it put $2,400 more in the pockets of the average family here in South Dakota, changed their lives. It gave them more opportunities to invest in their people and in their businesses and in their families, gave them an opportunity to maybe go on a vacation for a weekend or to buy an extra set of shoes or basketball clothes for their kids. It was, it was life-changing and to see that undone and more money taken out of their pockets so that the federal government can decide how to spend it is just a grave injustice that I think is pulling the rug out from underneath the American people. When I, when what got me into government and politics originally was tax policy. We got hit with the death tax uh, and it was devastating for our family. We almost lost our, our business because of that. It took us 10 years to pay off those taxes. Um, what Biden is talking about doing is going to an even higher level than that, which will be crippling to those small families that that have a little business that they operate that they hope to pass on to their kids someday. So it's really a threat to the American dream. And it's a threat to uh, the day to day budgets that these families live with and in the middle of America that that are on a tight budget already. They're seeing costs go up. And they know that when this goes into place, it'll be even more and harder for them to pay their bills. Well, that's absolutely right. And this spending uh, bill, the, this infrastructure bill uh, is, is beyond the pale. And I, I'm, I'm convinced that we are at a, a very crucial point uh, today in our, in our country uh, as we think about this spending, because it's well over our uh, our gross national product, mm -hmm. just to just to uh, uh, just to service the debt. Mm -hmm. If we pass, if we let Congress pass this, mm -hmm. and so it is vitally important that we, I think, that we defeat this this okay. bill and, and you know try and get some semblance of fiscal sanity back in in Washington. You know, Don and Tim, I I think what's people really need to realize is that leadership has consequences. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of people sit on the sidelines the last election cycle um, because they didn't have the perfect candidate or they didn't you know, like the environment or conversations that were going on. But the people that are in these seats makes a world of difference. And uh, there's a lot of people listening to this right now that think, you know what, maybe I didn't do enough in the last election cycle. Today's the day that you need to step up and do more. You start calling those senators. You start calling those members of Congress. I remember when I was in Congress, it only took three or four phone calls before we recognized that something was a big issue that I needed to be focused on. So people may be sitting at home thinking it doesn't make a bit of difference. It makes a, a huge difference your willingness to let your voice be heard and let them know, especially if you're not a frequent flyer, if you're not somebody who's calling their office every single day, every single week, when you call this time and you let them know that you're paying attention, uh, it will have an impact um, because this bill would cripple our country, not just for the next five years, but for the next 10 to 20 years. This type of spending cannot be undone overnight. And the people that are in those seats are having huge consequences on this country and will in our future. And that's why it's more important now today than ever that you do something, that you take action and that you don't sit back and wait for somebody else to do your job, that you, you take action and go out and weigh in and make sure your voices are heard. Ladies and gentlemen watching, uh, Governor Nome is so right. Uh, if you can click that I volunteer thread, make your voice heard and make sure that your two senators and your house, you may be thinking, well, gosh, my guys are good conservatives. They're going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. They need to be encouraged. They need to know the folks back home have their back. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you may think, oh, well, gosh, these folks are so liberal in my, my state. They're going to vote wrong. Every member of Congress, I worked on the Hill as a chief of staff for several years. Every member every day knows how many folks from back home have contacted them, what the issue was, and whether it's a yes or no. So it's registered, they monitor that. A lot of these folks wanna stay in office literally forever. They monitor closely what's happening in their district and state. So or I would urge you, take a moment, click that I volunteer link. Uh, Governor, we've talked about some big challenges the country is facing, and it is. It's a sobering moment without question for our nations, for our, for our nation, for our freedoms, for our prosperity. Uh, 
knowing you, I know that you're an optimistic person about our nation's future, though. You want to close us out today with the, of the reason that you do maintain a hopeful, optimistic view for our nation moving forward, despite some very difficult challenges right now. Well, we, we woke up this morning in the United States of America. We're still more blessed uh, than any other person in any other country in the world, just because we woke up here. So I think we forget so many times when we're watching the news, uh, we're, we're listening to what's happening across the country and we get discouraged by what we see changing quickly. But I think we need to remember that this country is still incredibly special. Our history teaches us lessons we can learn from every day. And for me, my faith is incredibly important. So I also remember that um, that God can change hearts and minds overnight uh, and that uh, there still is an incredible opportunity for him to uh, waken people, people up to the importance of freedom and liberty and really uh, the hope that we have in this country and in the people that live here. So I tell people everywhere I go, be happy. We will draw people to us by our optimism. Uh, you know, we, I, I, I've been around a lot of people in my life, Republicans and Democrats, and I didn't change any Democrats into Republicans by yelling at them. It was by building relationships. It was by um, loving them and then also educating them on the policies. And they realized that what we actually do as conservatives brings opportunity. It, it brings uh, the American dream to life for so many. And, and that's really how we won them over. So draw people to, to you by your optimism today, be happy. And then uh, be, be happy warriors out there making sure that we're focusing on what makes this country special and how blessed we are to be in the United States of America. Well said, Governor Christy Nome from the great state of South Dakota. For Don Hager, our Americans for Prosperity State Director in South Dakota. I'm Tim Phillips, president of Americans for Prosperity. We're going to stay out at the grassroots across this wonderful country of ours, fighting the good fight, as the governor said, as happy warriors, bringing people together uh, for these freedoms and for our prosperity. Thank you all very much.